Ooh, sunbursts, they're so bright, but they are so cool. Some of my favorite underwater photos. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Here we share all sorts of tips, tricks, and photo tutorials for improving your underwater photo and underwater video underwater. And today we're going to talk about how to create really stunning, vibrant sunbursts in your underwater scenes. Now, sunbursts are those shots you see that have vibrant sun rays coming down with a nice blue tonality in the water column from the lightest of blues, even with surface ripples, all the way down to the darker blues, and then of course your foreground subject. So they are stunning, spectacular scenes shot with pretty much every type of camera. So whether you're a beginner or an expert, you can shoot sunbursts. You just need a camera and a light, like a strobe or a video light. So let's dive in. Let's figure out how we can create great sunbursts. Welcome back. I'm pretty pumped up now. So we're going to break sunbursts down into three basic tips that you can remember and digest in order to work on these shots underwater. So the first tip is going to be to block the extra light. When you think about it, we are shooting a sunburst by pointing the camera directly into the sun. The sun is bright. It is literally a burning ball of gas. So what we want to do when we're shooting our sunburst is to block a lot of the light coming into the camera and hitting the sensor. If we don't do that, we're going to get a nasty blown out white type of ball or large white area in the top of the frame like you see in this example. And we really want to avoid that. The white is very, very distracting. White points are oftentimes the first place a viewer's eye will look in a photo. So we want to make sure we stay away from that. We want a nice crisp sunburst like you see in this shot because that's really gonna add to the, the stunning beauty of the scene and those crisp sun rays are going to help lead your eye into the scene and make you feel like you're looking at a beautiful underwater landscape. Now, sunbursts are going to be a little bit different depending on how shallow or deep you are and some of the water uh, clarity. So if you have very low visibility, you might get different results with the same settings than if you had very high visibility, like in some of the tropics. So that's going to vary a little bit. Oftentimes, better visibility and shallower conditions will help you produce brighter sunbursts. If you're talking about 15 feet of water, three meters in crystal clear visibility, that might be too much light. So you're going to really have to work your camera settings. But for average dive depths between 30 and 60 feet, which is about 10 to 20 meters, you can create stunning sunbursts in a wide range of visibility with some of these basic settings. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're using a very low ISO. And the ISO on a camera is the sensor's sensitivity to light. Now we're shooting at the sun, which is bright. So we want minimal sensitivity to that light. So move your ISO down to 80 or 100, uh, depending on your camera. Just put that at the lowest setting. The second thing to do is use a fast shutter speed because we want to block out a lot of extra light coming from that sun. So go to about 1 200th of a second, maybe 1 250th of a second for all cameras. One thing to keep in mind is specific cameras will have different sync speeds for their flash. So if you're shooting a Canon DSLR that has 1 200th of a second maximum sync speed with your strobes, you would want to keep your shutter speed at 1 200th of a second. If you're shooting a compact camera, that max sync speed is very high. So still go to 1 200th, 1 250th, um, but you don't have to worry about it all that much. So use that fast shutter speed because it will help block a lot of light while also helping freeze some of the motion of the ocean surface and actually create really vibrant sun rays coming through the scene. The third thing we want to do is stop down the camera's aperture, again, to let less light into the camera. So you want to do that by choosing a higher aperture number on the camera. And when you're using the lower aperture number, something like f2.8 to f4, you have a very large opening on the camera letting a lot of light in. When we move towards f11 on a compact or towards um, f22 on a mirrorless or DSLR interchangeable lens camera, that opening gets a lot smaller and those aperture blades close in and less light gets into the camera. So that's really what we want to do when we are trying to minimize that sunlight blasting into the camera and lighting up the sensor. So for a compact camera, try going to f9, maybe even f11. If you're shooting mirrorless or DSLR, try f18. It's a good starting point. It will be slightly different on every camera, but with those three things, you're gonna minimize that extra light coming into the camera and you should be able to see a nice crisp sunburst without a lot of extra white and also get some nice sun rays coming into the water column. 
If, for instance, the water column is mostly black and you're not seeing much blue, then you will want to reverse some of those settings to let a little more light into the camera. Maybe you will uh, lower your aperture, so go from f18 to f14, and maybe that's going to be the magic mix. But these settings are the general starting point and where you're going to start your process of composing your underwater sunburst scene. The second thing we want to do is pull our strobes in close to the front of the camera. And I've discussed the two-step exposure process for wide-angle photos in my strobe positioning tutorial, which you can watch right here. Highly recommend it. But basically, once you have adjusted the settings to get great watercolor and exposure in the background of the scene, now you want to use your strobe or your strobes to light the subject, um, especially for these sunburst, close-focus, wide-angle shots. Now, I would recommend a strobe for these type of shots over a video light or a constant light just because it's going to produce brighter power. But that said, depending on your camera and shooting conditions, you should be able to pull off these shots using a strong higher lumen video light. It just really depends on your system. If you have questions, leave the comments below. But what you're going to want to do is pull your strobe or your strobes in tight to the camera, in close to the port, whether you have a small wide angle port, a big wide angle port, or if you have a wide angle wet lens or wide angle conversion lens. Pull those strobes in close. The reason for that is we want to get the maximum amount of power out of our strobes. In the first step, we talked about closing down all the camera settings to minimize light coming into the camera. As a result, our strobe light isn't going to get into the camera either. So we know two things. One, we can increase the power of our strobes manually to produce more light. The second thing is we know that the strobe power and the strobe light going from the strobe head to the subject, bouncing off the subject and coming into the camera is going to fall off exponentially the further the strobe is from the subject. So the farther the strobe from the subject, the less light intensity. The closer the strobe to the subject, the more light intensity. So with these sunburst type shots, with the camera settings we're using pointing up straight at the sun, we want to pull those strobes in very close because that's going to produce the most power to help light our scene. I'm oftentimes shooting my strobes on full power with these sunburst shots, so don't be afraid to crank up that power. Again, after every shot, the best practice is always to hit that playback button or that image review button and look at the histogram to try to see what your exposure is and then start working on dialing in that strobe positioning and that strobe exposure so you have the best light with minimal backscatter. If you're curious about how to minimize backscatter, um, check out my tutorial linked here on the side of the video. And our third tip is to choose a great subject. And this is something that can be deceptively complicated. Um, you don't want to shoot at a boring subject. So if you're swimming along the reef and see a brown encrusting sponge, you might want to skip that. What we want is something that's easy to recognize and very colorful to be the foreground anchor for our sunburst wide angle scene. Now this is a close focus type shot. So you're going to have the camera very close to that subject. So something that really picks up the light well and is easy to distinguish is going to perform the best and look the best. So imagine you're a viewer going through Instagram or Facebook or other social media looking at little thumbnails. You see a bright blue sea star or a red gorgonian in a green kelp forest. You're going to stop because one, you recognize those things. Two, there's great color contrast and great pop. So those foreground subjects are really going to make the difference in your your, your sunburst shots. They'll complement those light rays really, really well. This is also one of those times where a great wide angle wet lens or a very wide angle field of view lens like a fisheye lens comes in handy. So if you have an interchangeable lens camera, look towards that rectilinear wide angle lens or look towards that fisheye lens because what is going to happen is that will allow you to have a very wide field of view and get very close to your subject while still maintaining that wide field of view, seeing everything, seeing the sun. And as a result, you're close to your subject, so you're minimizing water between camera and subject. Hang with me here. And because there's less water in between camera and subject, you're going to get a clearer image with less backscatter. So if you're shooting a compact camera, let's say, look for a wide angle conversion lens or a wide angle wet lens because that's going to do the same thing. It's going to allow you to get very close while creating a very wide field of view so you still see the whole scene. If you want to learn more about these wet wide angle lenses, check out my other video tutorial. A lot of video tutorial references here, right? But there's a lot of good info. So check out that video tutorial on wide angle wet lenses and you'll learn exactly why we want to use those when we're doing these close focus wide angle shots. 
and this is the composition we're using for sunbursts. So keep an eye on that, keep an eye on your subjects, use those wide angle field of view lenses and your compositions are gonna be right there. They're gonna be crisp, clear, well lit, vibrant and have those colors that are gonna draw people in. So I hope those tips are useful, you guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos and want to stay up to date on the latest tutorials. I'm producing them every couple of weeks. You can also check out my website, tutorials.brentdurand.com for a lot more info, a lot more tutorials, buyer's guides, gear, all kinds of stuff. Check it out. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next week.